What's going on guys? It's me, Kevin, back again with another video. So today I have a video on the Fear of God Californias. Uh, this is a slipper uh, model created by Jerry Lorenzo at Fear of God in collaboration with, uh, I believe, a different company that created the actual foam itself. I believe it's called Super Light XL or something like that. Extra Light, Extra Light XL. Um, so they did a few, I believe Adidas products that used this foam. Uh, it was a very limited uh, shoe model, but uh, this is their more wider range uh, foam. Uh, so Fear of God is the brainchild of Jerry Lorenzo. I mentioned him on the channel prior, whenever he did the Nike Air Fear of God 1. Um, and then what really intrigued me about the shoe is just the shape as well as the uh, the almost like luxe feel that you can get from like a slipper. I know that sounds very obnoxious, but um, so I picked up, this is actually my second and third pair. Um, I picked up my first pair when they did the original drop and then the whole sizing fiasco of that is a whole headache. Um, so I will get into that as well. The fact that I have two sizes probably means that it's gonna be a little bit complicated. Uh, so first off, the retail price of this, I think it's like 150 or 160. And then I think uh, Fear of God sold them at 190. I don't know why Fear of God always has this idea of like upcharging their own products, but they are now much wider available and they're actually available at quite a few different stockists, such as uh, like Mr. Porter, uh, and clothing, Amamanye. So I got two colorways. I have, this is the cement, as well as this is the blush. So the blush was a Fear of God uh, exclusive. And this one came out on their Instagram page as well as when they did the official drop uh, on their website. Uh, the shoe itself is a all one piece construction foam. I think it was just like a full, uh, uh, full, I guess, full like insert, like I forgot what that means, but it just injected with the foam and then they created this shape. Um, now, like one of the things that I'm just kind of amazed about is that how nice they got the toe to look. It just like seems to just like swoop down just so perfectly. And it must have taken a lot of different molds to really get that uh, nailed down. So this is the blush colorway. It's it's like a, I mean, it is like a blush, but it is a slightly more pinker nude color. So it's nothing too feminine, um, as well as it's, it's also not super, it's very androgynous, I will have to say. Um, I really do like this. This is probably my favorite colorway of the model. And then I also got the cement, which is like a colder blue, uh, kind of like what it says. It is like a cement gray, but just a little bit lighter than your normal concrete or anything like that. Um, so they release it in five colorways. I believe it's almond, cement, concrete. Uh, I think they had two other, but they're like tan and like brown, I believe. Um, but I'm sure they have fancier names than that, but here are the shoes. So now the biggest thing about the shoes you guys can already see is that they do get dirty and they do get beat quite easily. Now that was something that I was actually concerned as well as interested about is that all the promotional material made it look very sleek, very slim. And like one of the things that also was slightly concerning is that since this is all of a super soft foam, uh, creasing would happen straight out the box. Like as soon as I got these out the box and then I even like, kind of bent it in a little bit like this, there were already creases. Um, I haven't tried to use, so there's one method that I've thought about is like using a steamer to kind of let the foam expand back out and let the creases kind of go away. The creases aren't very noticeable until you're closer up. So, so you guys can kind of see those creases and I've worn this only a handful of times, I will have to say. Um, sure, a few hours per wear, but even the bottom, you can see it creasing up like that. And I think the whole appeal of the shoe really is the fact that it's like, it's supposed to look all uniform and the creases do kind of 
hurt it slash ruin it a little bit. And the foam is so soft that you can actually see where my foot actually steps. So you can see the ball of my foot, my toe, uh, as well as the heel. And you can see that I have like an arch, so that's empty. Um, and I will have to say that you will probably have to wipe this down quite a few times. Uh, here is the cement colorway. This one I've worn even less than uh, the blush, but this one I think I was just a little bit more rough with it. Maybe I was walking in the grass and such. Um, you can also still see that mirroring. This one looks like the bottoms that weren't as much, but the upper definitely looks dirtier. Um, but one of the good things is that all of that, like superficial dust, I can actually just brush it off with my hand. And even like, it's already looking a lot cleaner. I can just wipe it with a damp cloth. Now that's one of the pros. That's also one of the pros I think that the foam runners also have is that you can honestly just hose these guys down and they're pretty resilient in terms of uh, like the stains. Now for actual build quality, that's one of the things that I think the foam runners actually have a plus on these guys. Um, I can already see this shoe um, not lasting very long and especially the retail price that it was at, 200 bucks for me and then for other people, 150. Um, that is a pretty good shoe. Like you can, um, these are 160 and I, and I'm almost 100% sure these guys will outlive this. Maybe it's not as comfortable, I don't know, quality control, and also this is made in Italy, but still, I feel like this would outlast this. Same with uh, like even my Club C's, I feel like those will definitely outlast these, or maybe even the Jound, um, the Jound New Balances, those are will definitely outlive probably two pairs of these. Uh, that's one of the things that I think I've quickly come to notice is that these guys may not last very long. I, at the moment, don't have big issues with it, but the fact that also the bottom tread is also made out of that same soft foam, I can see those wearing off as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now let's get to the whole headache that is called sizing for these. So Fear of God has their own sizing uh, guest chart, but it's awkwardly and confusingly the same numbering scheme as the European sizing. So originally, so I'm a size eight to an eight and a half. I got a size 41 and that fit quite big. It fit like a nine to a 10. Uh, so I sold those off and then I was waiting for the restock and then finally they announced the blush colorway. So I was like, cool, I'll get a 40 this time. I got a 40, 40s fit good. Um, let me just put them on just to kind of refresh myself. So they do fit good, but I do feel like there is still a decent amount of room on the heel. I know this looks weird, but I'm like trying to pose for it, but there is about, I would say, uh, half to a quarter inch room of, I guess like wiggle room. And then like, if you're wearing slippers like this, it's very easy for your feet to sweat and then get chafed. Um, so sizing in terms of that, I felt like without socks or very thin socks, I had to go down to a 39 for your God, which is a 40 European, which is a US seven. So but keep that in mind. The fear of God sizing is always one size smaller than your European. So a 39 for your God is a 40 European, which is a US, uh, I believe it's a seven. So a 40 Fear of God is your European 41, which is US 8. So the US 8 fits fine. The 7, I think, fits the best without socks or very, very thin socks because it almost fits exactly. Even sometimes I even feel like it's slightly too small. So if they were to come out with half sizes, I would probably be a 39 and a half or a 39 and three quarters because I feel like it's like right in between because this one, it's like pretty pretty snug on my ankle or my, I guess the ball of my foot and like the heel of my foot, I mean, excuse me. So it's very, very close. Um, and I do, I personally really, really like this shoe. When they first announced it, I was completely like, yo, this is like, this is awesome. This is great. Cause this could easily be a house slipper all the way to work. 
because I've worn this to work a few times, gotten a few compliments, and it just is such a streamlined loafer. I've also worn it to a wedding and like everything. I think it looks very nice with like a pair of trousers or some suit pants, and I think it looks very, very classy. Now, um, another thing that I'm having a little bit of a hard time trying to decide whether or not it's like a product defect or something like that, but these shoes, or these slippers, I guess, are not very breathable. I know that it has this side um, cut here to kind of give it a little bit of ventilation, but in all honesty, I feel like my feet do get sweaty in here just because it's an all encapsulated sort of look. And I feel like if they were to add any other holes, I feel like it would potentially even ruin the shoe. Um, the only other hole that I would have maybe added is like maybe another thin, maybe hole or maybe even extend this slightly or something like that because i do feel myself uh, having sweaty feet in this especially without socks and then it starts chafing against the top of my foot just because of the way that this is curved around um, more so happens with my size 40 where I sometimes without socks i do get chafing um, but if i wear like normal to thicker socks on my 40 fit great if i wear thin to no socks on my 39 it fits great and again i'm a us 8 to an eight and a half. So uh, with more wide feet. So take that into consideration. Um, I saw a few people post that they went two sizes down, which technically would be a 39 if they didn't convert it properly. Um, but a 41 fear of God is a size nine US and a 42 European. So if you size correctly with your fear of God sizing, I'll even put it in the comments down below what the conversion is. Um, so you can kind of make your own decision about it. But do I think this is worth 200? Um, no, I don't think it's worth 200. The biggest downside that I can already see coming is that I don't even know if this can even get resold. Um, just because if I were to add like a Vibram sole to the bottom, it'll it'll kind of like muddy the look of the shoe. It'll kind of make it look like a weird Frankenstein where it has like a black sole. And I also don't even know if it'll um, bind to the super or the extra light XL foam correctly because um, this is a proprietary foam. And like typically when you do a resole, it's usually on like, um, like a fiber board or like a, a board where it can firmly attach to it. Well, this is foam. I don't think it'll foam firmly attach to anything. So when you walk, it'll probably even like stress out the shoe itself. Um, so that's one of the big downsides. But with all that being said, I do think that these would be worth the actual retail price, not the fear of God retail price. Uh, you can wear this for casual, you can wear this for business, you can wear this for formal. I think, I think you can wear it for formal. So yeah, like let me know what you guys think of the Fear of God Californias. I would do a few, um, I guess, like on feed for you guys so you guys can kind of see uh, the sizing as well as how it would look with every single sort of, uh, I guess, uh, spectrum of a formality. So yeah, like thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let, let me know what you guys think. Talk to you guys later. Peace.